Okay, welcome back to our last video on slug tests. Um, so this is the Boer and Rice method. So the last couple methods, the Vorslev and the Cooper methods, are pretty straightforward. Just you know, plug in the numbers, read something on the plot. Uh, it's pretty easy. Now this one is a little bit more uh, cumbersome, uh, but it allows you to find more uh, aquifer properties. So let's get um, started. So here again, you get the um, hydraulic conductivity. Uh, but you can really use any type of well basically in uh, non-penetrating, you know, wells will work uh, fine. So this is a very reliable method basically. Again, sort of assessing, you know, around that borehole that you may have. Um, this is the paper, the original paper. So the example I'm, I'm doing in this lecture is from that paper. Um, there's a, another one in your book as well um, that I'm not giving here. And the paper will be available, so there will be an activity uh, associated with this lecture and the paper will be, you know, you'll be given that paper there so you can uh, read it and find everything I'm talking about uh, in this lecture in there. Okay, so again, we, and we have, you know, we're given uh, an expression for the hydraulic conductivity that depends again on the casing radius on uh, the radius of the gravel envelope, if there's one right or on, the, on that screen, if you will. Um, the length of the screen, the drawdown, we know that, right, the head at different times, the time. But now look at this, we have this new thing, which is the effect, effective radial distance uh, of the well. So it's, it's almost like the uh, effective radius that we've talked about before. Uh, but again, there's no way we can know this, you know, a priori. There's no, you know, there's no way to find it. So the neat thing about this method, and again, notice those D's and L's here, because I'll talk about I use those later. So again, this is a well that doesn't have to be fully penetrating and D is basically the depth of the water table, what we've been calling B before or H. Uh, it's just in this, um, in this paper they have different conventions. So uh, the trick uh, used in the Boer and Rice uh, paper is that instead of finding what that effective radius is, we have expressions, basically empirical expressions, uh, for calculating this ratio, this ln of Re over Rw. And there's some constants here, here, or here, A, Bs, and Cs, uh, that you just go read on those curves on the left-hand side here. So you go read those constants, plug them in, and that will basically give you uh, this ratio here, right, that you need to find K. So if you remember K here, right, depends on that natural log of Re over R. So their method just gives you that number basically with some you know, empirical uh, formulation. So again, if it's fully penetrating, you would use this equation. If it's not a fully penetrating well, you would use this equation. Note the difference is that if it's not fully penetrating, you use A and B, you go read A and B from here. If it's a fully penetrating well, essentially, you go read C. So it's just two different equations, but again, you just go read those you know, those A, B, C's on this plot here, uh, plug them in, everything else you know, everything else should be given to you, uh, and then you can, you know, solve. So here's an example, again, the example, I guess, uh, from that original paper. Um, static water table is at three meters, D was at 80 meters, so again, this is what we used to call B as the depth of the, the full depth of the aquifer. H was 5.5, so that's where, you know, they were open, uh, in that well, uh, L 4.56, casing, um, screen radius, right? So everything is given to you. Uh, now, if you go in this bottom paragraph here, uh, you can see that this is the data on the left-hand side, and if you extend the straight line part to the intercept, you find that you have about 25 uh, seconds, excuse me, 25 seconds, right? Now, if you read, excuse me, if you read at 20 seconds here and you regress, well, that's pretty hard to do on the tablet here, but you're at 0 0.002 something, 0 0.002, well, here, 0 0.0024, they, they say, uh, when you read that value. Now, L over RW is 38. This is given here, right? L over RW, so you have that. So for this value of L over RW, 38 here, you can go read uh, A and B, 
again, this is not a fully penetrating well, so you read A and B from this curve, right? So A is on the left-hand side here, B is on the right-hand side here, and these are the values that are given to you here and here, okay? Now we just go plug that into our equation 8 again for the uh, non-fully penetrating. So we have A, we have B, we know DH, we know everything else, plug everything in, get this number, right? Once we have this number, then we can just, you know, use our equation for K and find K equals, you know, 3.4, 10 to the minus 4 meters per second or 31 meters per day. And that's how you use the uh, Boer and Rice method. So again, it's a little bit cumbersome. Uh, but it's definitely doable. So as a problem, as an exercise, you know, as an activity that I leave to you, uh, we can redo our Vorslev method, right? The one that we did with the T37 uh, last time, right? So we know what the answer is. We can use the um, uh, Boer and Rice method on this data and see that we find a very similar result, obviously. Uh, so here we'll have to assume that H is D is 20 meters. Uh, and then you can, so fully penetrating, and then you can use the equations from the paper to find the hydraulic conductivity and then compare that to the Vorslev method and find that it's very similar. Okay, thank you, and I'll see you in the next video. Thank you.